We can take our number line and we can do this. And we can bring it over negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. Positive 1 corresponds with a negative. negative 1. Teaching math and science to Minnetonka students has been turned upside down since voters approved a technology referendum in 2002. The smart board is unbelievable with being able to have everything that's on my computer available to me and to the kids. I can use the same lesson over and over. I can keep developing and improving it. The kids interact with it. They're so into technology. I can embed websites with it. I can do Excel spreadsheets with it. They can come up and write on the board with some different interactive um, things that we do. It just helps, I think, the kids get more involved in what we're doing, and it's, I think, enables me to be a better teacher. Well, in elementary school, it was the chalkboard, and then middle school, it got to the whiteboard, and now we finally have the smart boards, and you can go online to websites while you're in class, and your teacher can show you a lot more examples. 930.6. Did we survey 931 people? In teaching math, in the past, we relied on hands-on examples and hands-on activities, which was always a good thing to use, but sometimes you just couldn't simulate <laughs> or replicate some of the things that were more complex and more abstract. I think the, the biggest impact that's, that students have had is clarity of material in a timely fashion. Before, if they didn't understand something, they had to come in the next morning and have the teacher draw it out, take some time, and really and really lay it out for them. If you used to get stuck on your homework, you would have to call a friend or go in early before school. As we've been able to be uh, using Skyward and Blackboard online resources, you can use the websites that teachers provide you through links on it to be able to find the charts or graphs or notes that can help you sort of try to figure it out by yourself before you have to go in early. You don't have to hold a graphing calculator in your hands anymore to enter an equation. As long as you have an interactive whiteboard, using the TI Smart View to create a visual picture and be able to walk them through step by step on the board, that's, that's invaluable. We're able to take what we do in class and package it, save it, and have it online on Blackboard for kids to reference uh, when they're doing their homework, when they're preparing for tests. And what the really neat thing is, when kids are taking ACT tests or SAT tests, they can refer back to those files and, uh, and get some help with things they've learned earlier in the year to prepare for those types of tests. So now, how many cells do we have here? Two. Two. So are, are either one of these cells identical to the first cell? Yeah. No. no. So now, this is our virus. Lisa Carlson is using interactive websites to show her middle school science classes about viruses and bacteria. Okay, so it looks like the cells are getting longer, and all of a sudden they're splitting in two, so that cell wall is, is splitting them into two separate bacteria cells. Well, the goal is just to get kids involved and active. And you know, it's always amazing that when you ask kids to write on the smart board or to drag something here and there, how your hands go up. I mean, it's you know, 10 or 12, and it's sometimes even hard to figure out, all right, who can I get up there? You know, versus if there's not that interaction or if you're just asking a straight question, sometimes it might only be one or two hands. Our research has shown that kinesthetic learners, we've got a lot of those within our classrooms. So even the movement of even just getting up, I mean, it's really hard for kids to sit still for, you know, 52 minutes. So even that kind of breaks it up and gets them moving up and interacting with the material in a new way. Okay, Kyle, you're up first. And Lauren, you can go line up behind them for the next one. Science students are also heading to the computer lab to take online pretests, so teachers know where to focus their instruction. With that pretest, I've got that baseline data, and then we'll take a post test tomorrow, and so that way I can have a really good indication of, you know, was this was this activity beneficial? Was it helpful for kids? This glass jar, it's got a balloon on top that's sealed here, and if I blow into it. I can make the balloon get bigger. If I go like this and I put this in the end like this right now. Brent Frank videotapes some of his science experiments, then has the students respond on his online discussion board. Go on the discussion board. I've got it set up and I've just got no attachments on this one, you guys. You're just going to come in and answer the question straight up. You may have a classroom discussion going on and you know as a teacher there's that wait time waiting for five six seconds to to give kids a chance to process well for some kids five six seconds isn't enough 
Some of that processing occurs at seven o'clock that night. And the responses that I get when they go on the discussion board is nothing that I saw in class. It was, they needed more time to think about it. If you saw what happened on the video and you can explain that, that'll be great. Tonight I will go on there and respond to whoever goes on there. I think technology in the classroom is having a real big impact in terms of their learning. For them to interact with the smart board and to get up and touch it and manipulate different things, it, it creates an excitement in the classroom. Just drag those anticodons down to our mRNA and the rest of you have your codon charts out again. Biology has been a tech immersion classroom for, this is, we're now in our fourth year. What goes on in the classroom, what I can do with students, the effectiveness of my teaching and their learning and student performance are night and day difference, and I mean that sincerely. They can look at things visually that are normally, at a molecular level, something that I've only been able to talk about. Now they can go in and they can take a look at someone's animated version of that. And time and again, students will say, wow, you know, I didn't really understand what you were saying, but now I see it. I see this model for it. And we're also able to take tests electronically through Respondus so I can really individualize the kinds of exams that different students are taking or I can do a lot of differentiation. New technology is also being used when students perform science labs. They aren't just doing uh, the traditional high school labs are doing a lot of higher end technology based labs. I can use electronic probes to really economize the time that students have to spend in a lab. So as an example, we do a productivity analysis with dissolved oxygen and water. Normally, if we do a traditional titration with that lab, with the training that I have to do with students in the wet lab and with all of the practice that they need, that lab might take five days. And I could have it down to half that time, two or three days. So it really allows for efficiency and, and also a, a really good exposure for the kids to use technology that's used in common practice in real world lab applications. The kids are pulling up things and bringing in things and sharing things or creating things and they're being pulled up front. Myself as teacher being up in front has, has actually decreased which when you think about learning and thinking about uh, what should be happening in a classroom, I think that's great.